The best Nike pickup right now in September 2022, it's not even a sneaker by Nike. It's Nike itself. I guess trying to single-handedly endanger the panda was not a good idea. I surround my soul with the positivity. That's why I don't worry about the things that I don't see. Yeah. These days I don't worry about much. I think we should have some more fun. I still dream about the days when we were young. Hello everybody, it's your girl TJ back, another video on Talks with TJ. It's Friday, end of September, and there are deals to be had, but not necessarily on the racks in terms of buying sneakers. No, like Nike's at a bargain right now. We will talk about that. But um, also, I got some things in myself, okay? We don't need an extensive video here. Um, I got socks in. Now, funny enough, right? People didn't really seem to care about me picking up these socks last year when I did a video on fall socks up until they were featured in recent videos. And then like, oh my goodness, with the denim one, everybody cares about these socks now. So they are women's Jordan socks. I picked these up on Champs because they had both this pair and then the white pair uh the tan pair i actually wore in the video very hard to find like sold out everywhere but i picked up some socks i have other things on the way i'll actually get to the jordan 6 <clears throat> Yankees video tomorrow. That's what I'm calling it. I'm not calling it the Georgetown. I know that's what it's officially called, but okay, listen, I'm showing out. Judge broke the record. So I'll get to that. But today, let's just talk about the best bargain to be had. And I know a lot of times we're talking about steals and deals when it comes to sneakers. You guys know I love hopping on eBay. Goat has been amazing, amazing to your girl this year with all the SBs that I've picked up, but there's another bargain to be had, and that's Nike itself. I'm talking about Nike stock, so ticker symbol NKE. If you caught the earnings call or if you didn't, that's okay. Most people don't tune into that. Um, but for the earnings release to go over Q1 for Nike, listen, there were some good things, there were some bad things, right? Like, a lot of things are up in terms of them choosing to go direct to market, the amount of traffic that's on their site, like on Nike sites, like the most traffic they've ever had, ever. So they're they're seeing growth in amazing ways, but I feel like they uh, didn't really plan some of this out correctly. So they wanted to meet demand, higher demand for their product. I feel like they ordered a little bit. <laughs> too much inventory probably like way too many panda dunks i feel like that has to play a part i'm not hearing that it doesn't it has to play a part they can't be saved from everything globally that's going on in terms of a macroeconomic standpoint but then when you look at supply chain management transportation costs are still high very high newsflash we're entering the holiday season as well right now those go up think about how much you have to pay for a rush order or the amount of extra volume that's now uh being delivered to you even to your own residence by carrier so yeah it's a lot and so every single business i don't care if you're small i don't care if you're a giant like nike you have to account for those increased costs and it ate into their uh their margin like by a lot a lot, a lot, and they had other additional overhead they had to take care of, and that's not gonna stop. Think about this, the more they're trying to go direct to consumer, they're gonna have to account for those costs, at least until they get everything more up and running, and there's less of the middleman between them and other retailers that are selling their product and their SKUs on their individual shelves versus directly from Nike shelves, so stocks down after that was announced and uh that brings me to this point there's no better bargain right now than buying nike stock adidas stock also it's just it's just gone down but there's no better bargain right now and yeah i was featured also uh graciously very excited about that on business insider i should say within business insider either way you read it. <laughs> if you read it, you possibly saw my face on there. And the interview was great. It was amazing. And yes, it was centered and focused around uh, student loan debt forgiveness and my individual story in terms of paying diligently the entire I guess last two years, um, aggressively the last year. And you guys were able to witness that on the channel here. Like I documented that entire experience here on the channel. So you were able to see that. And I said, Hey, 
even once that that debt is gone the additional income that's available i don't just want i don't want to waste that it's very easy to waste that so i think i have to maximize the grace the opportunity that is present right there and that means not blowing it all just on more sneakers that i have to struggle to work into rotation as these brands grow they are growing first off because we continue to buy their product like they're doing something very right they grow but we continue to just buy things that break down over time and that's it where's the upside outside of immediate gratification for us there isn't if we're just looking at it from that little window there, there's nothing there so i I don't know why I did this little window. <laughs> so how about actually taking the time to invest? It doesn't have to be a lot, but invest something into these brands. We follow them. We track them. We know what's coming out when it's coming out. We know everything about these brands. So why not grow as they're growing? And that's what I decided to do. So I said to you all in that long extensive video that I would actually invest one, uh, or invest in one share of Nike and Adidas every single month. I guess I'll do that for as long as I'm here on the platform. And so I actually went ahead and executed uh, those trades over this past week. So, you know, gotta, gotta have the receipts. We gotta have the receipts. So when I purchased uh, the one single share of Nike, uh, market value at $96.70 per share, and then for Adidas, $63.28 per share. Now, if you recall, I actually anticipated this to cost me around 185 or 190. I said, hey, it's probably gonna cost me close to a retro, a men's uh, cost of a retro every single month. As you can see, that doesn't add up to 180. That's a bargain of 160. Why? Stock has gone down. And I don't know if you've actually paid attention to stocks for Nike and Adidas, but let's just go back. So let's say, start of the year because i understand some people have this they have it in their mind right they're able to buy so many other things but they have it in their mind oh i just i just don't have the money or i just can't invest there's no room within you know my income and with my expenses yet you find the time and the money to go ahead and chase down like four pairs of shoes a month Okay, whatever you need to tell yourself at the end of the day. So let's just say you felt it was a little too expensive. January of this year, January 4th to be exact, I'm looking at the cost. 166.39 per share of Nike, 146.05 per share of Adidas. Yeah, if we take a look at that today when I'm filming this, which is Thursday, September 29th, following that earnings call and everything that's going on with Yay and they're trying to pass the torch for CEO at Adidas, uh, $95.33 for Nike and $60.63 for Adidas. So don't tell me those aren't the best bargains to be had right now for sneakers. That's less than what an Air Force One at this point, the way people are very upset about the cost of those going up, less than a form if you're into Adidas. So less than what, a Yeezy slide? <laughs> I'm not discussing Kanye in this video, but the point of the matter is we can choose to be more intentional as consumers of what we put our money into to say we're buying sneakers and we call them assets unless you're looking to actively sell that shoe when you have that in your mind when you pick it up it's not an asset it's just sitting there it's not earning you anything it could also be losing because the value of that shoe might not go up and i also choose to play the long game when it comes to stock so i understand people will say yeah, but it's down right now. And how long is it going to be down? I'm 32. I don't plan on withdrawing this anytime soon. It can sit there. Matter of fact, it's invested in a Roth IRA. So it's just going to continue to sit there. So I invested a single share of Adidas and Nike into my Roth IRA. I will do that every single month. I'll hold myself accountable and go ahead and do that here on the channel every month. Now, the one thing though, I was actually trying to like screen share even going through the different stocks in the the history of it this uh over this past year but listen uh google screen share is just very protective and the fact that there were dollar signs and everything on my watch list they said no not happening not doing that but uh listen stocks are down right now i take a, i can take a look at my wish list or watch list right now for stocks adidas is down Apple, Coca-Cola, eBay, Gap. We know Gap is down. <laughs> that debacle right now. Uh, and then I follow index funds as well and invest in some of those. So yeah, things are down. But if you play the long game, this is quite honestly to me the best bargain. Because once Nike goes back up, 
just in January, they were at 166. Once they go back up, the people that invested, yeah, that return is there. Also, you never really see a loss if you don't choose to sell when they're down. All right, so not that that's financial advice or anything, just how I'm choosing to approach this, to be a more intentional consumer as I buy everything that's Nike, Jordan, and Adidas, and new, you know, I can't invest in New Balance as family owned, but point being, be more intentional as a consumer. You can still enjoy things today, but plan ahead for the future. All right. I appreciate you tuning in. As always, act your age, not your shoe size. Peace.